My name's Clayton Norris. This is from Chains to Gangs. A life in transition. You should follow the story. Uh, Cause it's real. It's raw. I tell the suck uh, as well as the good. Because a lot of it is hard and sucks. But it's worth it in the end. Apparently, holy shit. Right about now, you're probably wondering what the hell is a DEXA. Let's discuss this real quick. DEXA, D-E-X-A, Dual Energy X-Ray Absorptionometer. Essentially what it was made for originally was to check for bone density. Um, in older people, osteoporosis, when we see if their bones are getting brittle or not. Somebody, at a certain point, realized that, hey, we can also check for body fat percentage an amount of muscle mass. All we have to do is alter the, the energy profile of the machine and that's all it is. So it's much more accurate than a scale. It's a little bit more accurate than a bod pod. Um, and it's a hell of a lot more accurate than bioimpedance. Basically what Cleet's getting ready to go through, he cannot hide from. Whatever that body fat percentage of the DEXA says, that's what it is can't run and hide from it at all. The scale, you can pretty much throw that away. Even though we're gonna use the scale as an indicator, um, what happens is, is you lose body fat, as indicated by the DEXA, you're gonna be putting on muscle mass too, and at a certain point, those two are gonna cross. Which a lot of people would just look at the scale and go, oh, I quit losing weight. That might be a good thing. That might mean you're putting on a lot of muscle mass, and in the end, <clears throat> muscle is what is the furnace that burns fat. So we want as much muscle as possible. Anyway, he's getting ready to find out what his body fat is. Any guesses? I know what my guess is. So this is actually uh, Brewster at uh, University of Texas. It's the Brewster building. It's actually the west side of the football stadium. I know you can't see a whole lot here, but it is the west side of the football stadium. And inside it looks rather like a dungeon. Yay. I'm kind of freaked out. All right, what do we got? <laughs> well, I undershot right, that one a little see. bit. What was it? My total mass was 239.6. Right. Fat mass, 85. 85 pounds? 85. 85 pounds of fat. Lean mass, 147. Right on. Which puts us at a percentage. Mm-hmm. 35.5. It's over a third. We got work to do. Right here. We got work to do. <laughs> All up in here. Start out, bro. So, how did I get here? I started smoking weed when I was 13. And that kind of started a, a rebellious kind of attitude. And uh, honestly, that started my initial hiding from everyone, you know. And as that progressed through high school, I had more absences than I can keep track of. It started the whole, I'm too smart for this, I don't need to be here, you know. Then I almost didn't graduate high school because of absences. And then after that, after I graduated high school, it just started going down, 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 down. And the restaurant that I was working at part-time just to make money ended up becoming my life. And I started working and living paycheck to paycheck. And my quality of life just went downhill fast. It was work, party, sleep. Work, party, sleep every single day every day from spending my extra money after rent and utilities and food and all of that to to sp spending almost all my money on the partying and the drugs and that caused more depression which caused me to want to get more drugs and alcohol and that was nine years of that 
and I tried to get in and out of school and I had times where I was doing okay but I was so depressed with the life decisions that I had made that that was it I had it stuck in my head that this is it I am gonna be a line cook for the rest of my life and I, I screwed up my chance at having a decent happy productive life full of aspirations and goals so determined that I was a failure in life that there was no way I could make up for it so many lies and hiding so often that I, I couldn't I couldn't change it anymore I couldn't get it back sent me into a horrible horrible downspin I started using heroin again and I said thanks to myself like I'm, I'm good because I never shot up I only snorted which is just stupid you know stuff like that trying to make it seem okay and you know I was using it to self medicate so I didn't have to think about how depressed I was and how stuck in life that I felt one day I went out to get some and on the way back I got pulled over and ended up getting searched and they found it and I got I got arrested and I got transferred to jail where I was quite literally stripped of everything that I had and I put on a orange jumpsuit and some flip-flops no socks no underwear no shirt nothing and then I was shuffled <laughs> chained hands and feet shuffled all the way down to C block they unlocked opened the doors stepped in and she said pick a cell and that's when I started breaking down mentally hard and I had to sit with that for five days about what am I going to do. Because I honestly thought that was it. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a jailbird now. You know, that's, that's, that's who Cleet Morris is. That's what I, what I aspired to was, was jail, Vance County Jail. You know, I decided, like, I don't want to do that, man. I think I'm better than that, you know. I really do. I have aspirations again. I have goals again. I have things I want to do in life, and I know that I can do it. Physically, mentally, it's exhausting, you know, but it's so much more worth it. I'd rather be exhausted, given everything I can to have a better life, than to just lay there being complacent and just in a horrible spot. I would take this any day, any day. I was trying to get it, I live. I want them dead presidents. I want to pull up, head spent. Get it, get it. Six jobs, I don't get it.